John 5, 19, where Jesus said, I only ever do the things my Father tells me to do. And John 5, 20, the Father says, I delight to show my Son what I'm doing. He delights to show you what He's doing. And so there's this, this, this move of the Spirit, considering everything else that's happening, the earthquake in Turkey and the, uh, the train wrecks in America and, and all of the things that are happening around the world in Auckland and New Zealand and all of that. There's this move of God coming against the darkness. But we want to move with it. Well, you can't move with it if you're an old wine skin. And you can't move with it if you're, if you're on old wine. You can't move with it. This is a new thing. So everything you think you know that's only any good, listen, let the Holy Spirit orchestrate in you what needs to come out of you. Don't yeah. you go thinking. Don't you go working it out logically. Don't you go doing that in your mind because you're stepped into the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and it won't be at the tree of life. You flow with the spirit. It's all about cardiognosis. It's all about heart-to-heart knowledge. It's about flowing with him, listening to him, living with him, loving him. And if he wants you to, to soar in the, in, the, in the spiritual realm and protect the earth and be an earth steward, do that. Whatever it is he's called you to do. But don't compare yourself with anybody else. Don't think, well, nobody else is doing what I'm doing because every, God God's got an individual thing for everybody. But you've got to be yielded to the Holy Spirit. You've got to be intoxicated with the new wine. There's a, there's a way of flowing with him so that he can move you in the gifts in any way he wants. And he can have the fruit flowing out of you in every situation where it's needed. There is a, a move of, he's so hungry to have a, a group of people who will align with him. Yes. Who will engage with him. Yes. Sonship. Yes. Legacy. Engagement. The Holy Spirit is looking for this. You know, and, and we, we can't we can't keep coming to church thinking it's always going to be like this because it's not. It's not. There's going to be times that we all ascend together and we carry out an assignment in the heavenlies. On Thursday at the business prayer meeting, you know, there was a, a small group of us there. And the Lord said to us, I want you to ascend. And some of us went from open heaven. I was like, well, okay. But we ascended. And we have actually prayed about the recession, the inflation for this nation. We repented of, um, of the way Australia has managed its resources and what governments have done. Closing down manufacturing, sending things off to other nations, not looking after its own people. We, there was so much we repented of. And then we ask for the mercies of God that we would not come under the consequences or, or the, the effects of man's. We want to come under the hands of God yeah. for change, yeah. not man. We don't want to come under government or man. I can't think of the word. But we want, we want the hand. If David was given the choice of being assaulted by the enemies or more by God, he took God. We want God. Yeah. And so it was basically saying, God, for this nation, Jesus is our jubilee. Yeah. Jesus is our jubilee. And we recognize that there will be a little bit of turmoil as things are sorted out, as you bring things into divine order. But we would rather come under your hand than the hand of man. Come on. And that was our assignment on Thursday at the business prayer meeting. Yeah, so there will be times when we come together here on a Sunday and there will be assignments. There'll be other times when maybe you won't turn up at church because God's got you doing an assignment. But what the, you have more than anything else, let me tell you what's important, what I, is that you must nurture your relationship with the Holy Spirit. Nurture it. He is often overlooked. We need to allow the Holy Spirit to take our relationship with Him where He wants to, where He wants to take it. And for some of us, we like to control things just a little bit too much. We like to feel a little bit safe. And if I'm going to feel safe, then I can't allow this to happen. I'll feel me, but I just need to be safe. God knows what you need better than you know. And I was listening to Myron Golden this week. Oh, I praise God for that man. I was listening to Myron Golden and he said, God always delivers his people into danger to go through it. Like at the Red Sea, you know, like 
They have to walk through the Red Sea with all these walls of water on either side. They can't see anything on their back. So God delivers his people through danger to show up his glory. But we want to stay in control. We want to keep it. This is the way it's got to be. This is the way I like it. This is how I feel good about it. And quite frankly, there's no time for that in this dry season. You are the new wine skin. You're going to carry the new wine. You are the new wine skin. It's time to be filled with the new wine. Yes. In, in Ephesians 5, I think it's 18. You know, sometimes we come to church and people say stuff, things happen. I preach things, people get prophecies, whatever it might be. And sometimes we get a little bit agitated. Ever been agitated in church? <laughs> we can call it different things. But basically, when that happens, it's usually God getting under your skin. Yeah. God gets under your skin. Yeah. God gets under the skin of the wine skin. Yeah. God gets under the skin because he's trying to draw our attention to something. Sometimes, you know, we, we get offended by the truth. We get offended by the word. That's okay. Because God is just showing us stuff so that we can change. He loves you too much to leave you where you are. Count it all down. When? Before. Not if, but when. And so recognizing these things, he wants to do an amazing work with you, a dynamic work of the Holy Spirit in and through you. And in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18, I think that's right. Don't get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery. But be ever filled and stimulated with the Holy Spirit. With be ever filled. That's the, in the Greek. That is be be continually being filled with the Holy Spirit. Continually being filled. So what happens is when you start to get a little bit agitated at church, what God is wanting to do is He's wanting to expand the wine skin. He's wanting to make more room to bring in more joy, more peace, whatever it might be, but He wants to expand you. He wants to fill you with more of God's presence. He wants to fill you with more of Himself. So there's an expansion coming, but we get a bit agitated and we want to shut the whole thing down because I'm feeling really uncomfortable about this. But God, but the Holy Spirit's doing So he wants to expand the skin, but he wants to fill you. He wants more and more of God in you. Here we go. It's like a tease or laughter. Have the people on Zoom and they're doing okay. And you know what? The more the more intoxicated you are with the Holy Spirit, the more you aggravate and agitate the religious people around you. So if you're a little bit agitated right now, <laughs> Sometimes 
I don't know what comes out of my mouth, so I don't know what I say. That's the word kainos, which means a renewing, a renewing of the quality of the skin. It's, it's, it's a renewing of the, of the actual skin itself, and that's okay. And so what God is wanting to do is he's wanting to see a group of people that are so intoxicated Ooh. by the Holy Spirit, mm. so on fire, mm. so touched by tongues of fire, so filled with the presence of the Holy Ghost, Flowing in gifts as he wants you to move in and peace. Living the fruit of the Spirit. Defying the laws of the natural realm. They're making things impossible possible. This is the power of the Holy Spirit. You are washed by the washing of the water of the Word, but you're also washed by the regeneration of the Holy Spirit. And you can no longer afford to ignore the Holy Spirit. You can no longer afford to not obey his annoyances, his little nudges, his quiet things, because he's got a little voice. And he's a gentle man. He's powerful. But he's, he's a gentle man. So if he asks you to do something and you say no, he steps back. And he'll let you go your own way. And then we wonder why our Christianity is powerless and why nothing really changes for us and why our prayers aren't answered. Could it be disobedience to the Holy Spirit who is the governor of God upon the earth? He is the governor of the kingdom of God upon this earth. And he's been so gracious with us. While most of us have been like fumbling around trying to figure out what's going on. He's been so gracious with us. But I tell you, you're coming into a time where your relationship with the Holy Spirit is going to be more important than you've ever known it to be before. When you're going to have to flow with him like you've never flown with the Holy Spirit, you've flowed with the Holy Spirit before. Because he's doing something and he needs new wine skins, which means we have to change, which means we have to break down strongholds, we have to break limitations. We have to stop thinking it's going to be this way or that way. We're going to have to move with the Holy Spirit and allow the mind of Christ to actually take over our mind so that we flow with the wisdom of God. We, instead of saying, no, Holy Spirit, and not even realizing it's the Holy Spirit, that he's coming in power and he's coming in might for a nation. And we're either going to be with him or we're going to be against him because with the Holy Spirit, it's one or the other. He does not recognize Switzerland. He does not recognize a peace treaty. He does not recognize a neutral place. You're either flowing with him or you're not. And we don't know the Holy Spirit. You know, we don't really know the Holy Spirit. Do you understand how many? I've got over 200 titles of the Holy Spirit. 268, I think, at the present moment. Titles of the Holy Spirit from the Word of God. We've got to know him. We've got to know when to ask for the spirit of judgment or the spirit of burning. When to ask, is this the time for a spirit of war? Mm -hmm. Or is this the time for a spirit of life, for a spirit of truth, for a spirit of intercession, spirit of knowledge, spirit of wisdom, spirit of understanding, spirit of counsel? There's so many different titles. And if we're not understanding of his position in the kingdom, we can't flow in honour. Yeah. In honour for the King and for His Spirit. We have to. The Holy Spirit is wanting a people yield and allow him to fill them and intoxicate them with the joy of living with power, with might, with whatever is needed but to come under his influence 
in such a way that there is no doubt that there is a God who is all-powerful.